welcome to the most authoritative entertainment analysis show on television. It's called Simply Showbiz. My name is Ms. G. It's such a pleasure, as always, to have you on the other side joining us. Today, we take a step away from the norm. Today, we are celebrating a man that has become a household name, not only in Ghana, but in Africa and worldwide as well. I'm told he's the first man to have been nominated for the Black Entertainment Television Awards, the one we are making noise about now. We are children. When he was nominated, where are these kids, you know? A man who was honored over the weekend in Kumasi, a man who still is as humble as though he started his craft yesterday. I'm talking about a man who was born Julius Kojo Entry, popularly referred to as Kojo Entry, known as the music man, called the maestro. All the beautiful names are those accolades that we give him because he's made an impact in our music industry. And so we are dedicating uh, the show today to Kojo Entry. And we are celebrating him, finding out all that we need to know beyond his music. Because I just found out that he has 12 other siblings. Oh, where are they? How are they doing? And what's up for him now that he's been honored as he prayed he would by the Otum Four. So Kajuentri is my guest. Unfortunately, he's not in studio, but fortunately, he's joining us via Zoom. And so let's introduce the man who needs no introduction, Kajuentri. Great to have you join us, sir. Great to be here and thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations to you. Thank you, thank you, and I thank all the people who contributed to to this whole thing, not just the award, but the fans, Guyanians, and the, those who made it possible for me to get here. It's been a long journey, but we're still on, but, uh, you know, and there's still, uh, there's still more to come. I mean, as we go, we'll talk about it. Okay, as we definitely go, we'll talk about it. I am amazed by the speech you put out there. And I'm asking myself, you've been honored a lot of times. What did this particular award mean to you that it took you? Uh, you had a lengthy speech, you know, on social media to show gratitude for this award. And I'm like, oh, Kudrenshi has won a lot of awards. What about this got you putting out all of that? Well, this one for me, I mean, an award coming from Utunfo. I mean, when I, when I was given the first uh, uh, the letter that made me a laureate, I mean, that I've been chosen for an award, I was told that Utunfo specified that this should go to uh, Koju. Oh, wow. And for me, that that's a big deal. I mean, that's a it's a, a big endorsement because um, you know. We, you start out as a musician. For me, my whole, whole journey, I've been battling to become, to move up, to become more of a statesman, that the, the music means more than just where that people will listen and dance to. But now if people like Utunfo and the whole team are seeing it, that the, the music, the lyrics, the attitude that, I mean, you... you uh, the what you show the image that you show the the young ones and everything is part of nation building whatever we say in our songs means more than just listening to it for entertainment that me that's a big deal to me because for me it's a is is the first step of of uh, becoming a statesman and that's what i i i uh, seek to become more someone who can bring people together unite the nation and advise the youth where possible and then and this is the first step i mean for me it means more than yes i mean competing in a, a category that music different kinds of music are chosen different musicians are chosen and people are voted for this none none of it was part of it this is one that you are chosen for so it means it means a great deal to me is that to say it's the first time you're being chosen by the state or uh, by a, a, a figure of that kind? Say, for instance, now you've been honored by Lutunfo, but by a president. It's, is it the first time you've had a state recognition or award? No, I've had, I've had a few before. The 24th event that I do was given an award by the tourism uh, ministry. That was when... Uh, uh, the minister, uh, Mike Gizzo, was there. Okay. That uh, event ago. was given an award. And I have received uh, different uh, awards, but this one, like I said, 
uh, I didn't only receive the award, but I had uh, the opportunity to, to also perform in front of Chief Imam. Chief Imam is not someone who will like come to your event. Mm. And I mean, having the president right in front of me, Utunfo uh, Nano said to the second being there and a whole lot of uh, other people. I mean, it was, and getting the opportunity to perform at Mencia, that was a big deal for me. Indeed, a big deal. You know, we needed to reposition yourself because we are not getting uh, the full shots of you. There's no... You're not red, getting the full shot. Is it better now? It's better now, but we can't see your face as well. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. Okay. Is it better? Uh, I don't know how it looks on TV, but I think it's okay. I think we can make do. It's okay. Uh, can we work with it? Yes, I think we can if, make do. If I, if I put it too far, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, so well, I, think, I think we can make do with this. Uh, so um, you are honored. I'm sure a lot of people who do not know. So I want to read uh, what it says you're honored for briefly. So uh, you are honored for your immense and unprecedented contribution in music and the entertainment industry of Ghana, Africa, and the globe. And uh, it says that... Um, the honor that you received, that's what I'm looking for now, is Millennium Excellence Award, Gold Coast Honor in high recognition of lifelong commitment to national cohesion and stability. Is that it? Okay. I couldn't hear you too well, but uh, uh, can you repeat the, the end part for me, please? So, Gold Coast Honor in recognition... Correct of long, lo lifelong commitment to national yeah. cohesion and stability. Okay. Uh, so what do you want to know is that uh, I'll, the, I'll, the I, honor... Is, is that what the honor is? Because that's what I'm reading. Yes, yes. I just yes, wanted correct. a confirmation that, that, that's what it is. Of, of, of this. Okay. Yeah. So, so away from this, there's also a conversation that I want to have about you. Uh, I okay. gave the introduction and said that you're the first person, at least that's what I see or uh, reading on Wikipedia, you're the first musician, Ghanaian musician, to have been nominated for a BET. Yes. Uh, I, again, I can't hear the words too well, but I'll try to make something out of it. Did you mention BET? Yes, I'm saying that... You I'm being told via Wikipedia yeah. that you're the first Ghanaian musician to be nominated yes, for I was. the BET. I was. When that category, to, I mean, when BET decided to admit us, I mean, those from these, you see, America always imposes its culture, images and everything, the flag and everything on the world. When it comes to exchange of cultures, they haven't been very uh rece receptive of receipt i mean getting knowing about other cultures so when BET decided to to have the category that can admit international artists that we were given the opportunity to be part of it the very first uh, category that came uh, i was part of it was p square mi uh, myself and a few others and uh, that i mean that was the first time that category was was made to accommodate us and, and and how long ago was this uh just about 10 years ago 10 years ago uh, Correct. And, and and are you worried that when the BET conversation is pops up your name doesn't seem to have been or doesn't seem to be one of the uh, names that are constantly talked about when we talk about BET in recent times can, 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 can you slow down a little because it's uh, I can't the, the, the sound gets more full once in a while, so it's hard for me to, to make out the words. Okay. So, it, yeah. Okay. okay. So I was asking if you, yeah. you, you get worried or concerned when the conversation about BET is being held, your name doesn't seem to find a place in there. It's more of uh, Sarkodier, Stone Boy, and that's what we keep repeating. And it's as though nobody seems to remember or maybe... Many do not seem to know that at a certain point in time, you were the first person to have been nominated for a BET here in Ghana. Um, well, I believe, I believe a lot of people do know, but uh, for me, um, it's, I don't leave my, my, the, my music. I've never lived my musical life by the, the winning of awards. 
Uh, I've never lived. Uh, my music is not about. I'm, I'm not saying the others are, but what I'm trying to say is my music is based on skills, practicing, and knowing, getting enough knowledge about what I do and how to to make it good. I mean, musically, because uh, uh, I believe when you base your your whatever you do on hype, you can keep up. And uh, being at the BET is just uh, just a page in in a, a chap, uh, let's say a chapter in in my life. And um, uh, uh, it's I believe uh, Sarah Cordier, Stone Boy, and the rest they they've been there. Some have won it, but for me it's I, I mean I've been to a whole lot of others. I won Kura Awards twice, so. When you come into, I mean, you get on my website and other things, you will know about that. But for me, BET is a big is a big deal. But I I I do what I know how to do best: just produce good music and produce good shows. That's what's important for me. When I'm able to mount the stage to perform, and I get the crowd to clap for me, for me, that is a priceless award that money cannot buy. I am asking this because this is, I don't know how it used to happen back in the day. You have done almost about three decades of music. Is that it? Four decades? Say it again. You've done four decades of music? Yes, 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 okay. yes. I mean, I started out not as a recording artist. I started out singing covers of other, I mean, uh, hit songs from the West, like every song that became a hit. I, I was a singer who was doing songs of Bob Marley, Benny Spear, I Jaman, and Cool and the Gangs, and all the other bands. That's how I started out. Even before I stepped into the recording studio, I could still mount the stage and perform, uh, I mean, a repertoire of about six hours, which none will be mine, but I can still ent entertain you with doing songs of any other. I mean, for me, that was the, the education that I got knowing how others structure their songs and mold their songs, knowing how to set moods for songs, songs that will, will, will live with you for a long time, songs that you can dance to, songs that the lyrics are more important, so you go, you go low on the, on the beat because you want the lyrics to come out, you know? And so that's how I started out. And I mean, I've been in it for, for almost four decades, yes. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you being in music and starting off with a band and, you know, being the lead at a certain point uh, for Classic Vibes. You started off with Boom Talent and then being uh, the lead for Classic Vibes. But let me go back to why I actually the question about BET. I'm just trying to find out how you've been able to sustain this four decades or close to four decades of relevance because they say to us these days that this is show business a bit of the show you talk about the business part and then you have to show things you have to brag about things you have to put things there and here you are a BET nominee two times Cora uh, award winner and you know you're not putting it in our faces yet you've been able to keep the pace for four decades um, I mean, it is a blessing from God. I mean, now if you ask me, how did you get into music? I'll tell you, uh, music found me. I believe I'm a, I'm a vehicle being used to, to spread positive message, to spread love, to, to make the home a peaceful one. And, uh, some years back, I'll tell you, okay, I started in this way, but if I look back, I believe that I was sent here to just share music with the world. And uh, um, I, had a, I had the opportunity to perform with uh, a whole lot of uh, young people who were more like mentors to me. Uh, I learned from the, from the masters, and by that, I was able to establish my own show, which is the 24th December um, event that I do every year. This year I'll be celebrating 30 years of that. 30 years of the 24th show. I, I'm not saying that to blow my horn on anything, but I don't know of any other artist anywhere in the world who has been able to sustain 
his own show for 30 years, you know, and uh, it hasn't been easy, but that was a platform that I, I used that I could do a lot of crazy, avant-garde, uh, different things on stage, things that you normally, you will normally not see on any other stage. I've been on stage with a white horse. I wanted a, a, a white horse and I, 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 I had to, I mean, my team had to find me a white horse. I did a, just the five minutes intro, but that intro will live with you for, for, for your whole life. I've been on stage as a, as a, as a chef who, who comes to the, to the venue to serve music to the audience. So the, your audience will, will, will request the song and it is played for them instantly. And these are things you will never, you never see on any other stage. Again, for me, uh, it's, it's, it is a, a, a big deal. But there is so many. You mentioned the show and the business. Yes, it is the business that keeps the show going. Without the business, the show aspect of it will, won't, won't have, I mean, will, will die. And uh, I've been able to produce my own works. In that way, I can, de I can decide what I want in the song, being tones or being the rhythm or being the lyrics because... I remember when I came out with Dadianuma. When I came out with Dadianuma, all the songs that were being played was uh, more of a, the, a, a tempo about 125 uh, B, BPM, you know, fast tempo. Uh, songs like AB Crinsel, Papa Semoko, Ukrumu, Upbeat, I mean, danceable songs. And there I was with the song, which was like uh, a, a complete ballad, slow, slow music. And I even got. Some of the musicians say, ah, but I believed in the song, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And uh, I, the lyrics were things that people could relate to because you had a lot of Guineans who had traveled outside and those who were feeling homesick and those who were here missing their loved ones, they had something they could send. Instead of just writing a letter, you could send Daddy Anume, and you've already said all that you want to say to your, to your loved one. And so it, it, it worked. And I'm very particular in choosing titles for my songs, titles for my albums, and always the songs, some of the songs that I played then were way, way ahead of my, I mean, it's time. And that's why it's been able to live throughout these, uh, uh, all these uh, decades, you know. How did you how did you do that? You know, like you're saying, some of us grew up listening to some of these songs. I remember watching uh, back when I we returned from Nigeria in the late '90s. Tom and Jerry, I see cartoons on TV, and we're so enthused about that. It's grown over on us, and even till date, when Tom and Jerry is played. It's a song that we would all want to sing and still remember uh, the kind of emotions it gave us back then. How are you able to write these songs? Does it take you months? Uh, does, do you have people who write for you? How did you come by these songs? You have to be dedicated to what you do. Uh, and you have to look for, you see, when the, I found out that the voice is my instrument, I decided to speak less, talk less, and listen more because from listening, I'll gather words, words that may seem nothing to uh, someone. I mean, in a conversation, you'll be talking. Uh, maybe I'm just uh, listening, but I'm looking for words that I can use because that's where that's every time that the people are talking. That's my library, library that I can find a word or to complete a song or a word that can complete. A, 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 a sentence for me, a word that has not been overused. And that's what I seek for. I read a lot. I research a lot. I listen to all type of music all over the world. Every day when I get up, I want to listen to a song that I haven't heard before. I want to hear a word that I, I need to go. I mean, something that will push me to go and do a research. And uh, the, I think what has uh, worked for me is that um, most of my love songs, I have written some of the, most of the love songs from the feminine uh, perspective. perspective. Mm. Mm. A song like Infamen Koho, 
is a song that a woman wears of a, of a, of, of, of a woman. A song like Me Jari is a song which of a is, woman which is, which who is, is at home favorite. waiting for her. I, I, st I still struggle to know the words, but it's my favorite. I like the way you rattle, rattle the words. I'm not da 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 even when I don't win with that, with a song or an album, I still learn from the mistakes that I, I mean, uh, even if I don't get to be on the chart, I learn lessons from it. So uh, I, I still don't lose. Mm. Now, 22 albums, that's what you have to your credits. And uh, uh, that's incorrect. How, I've, how I've heard a lot of people talking about 22 albums, 22 because that's, albums. That, that's I, what Wikipedia gives us. It's not been updated. Yeah, no, the, the, the information on Wikipedia, I'm going to get, I think, everything on there, I mean, corrected because okay. it's not right. I have only 13 albums. Oh, really? Correct. 13 okay. albums. Yeah. Maybe they added and they added nine more to you so that you they can added <laughs> nine more to you because that's you see when you produce quality works mm. and every song on the album means something to people. It, I mean, if you speak about Bob Marley before he passed away, I think he he has about just about thirteen albums himself, either eleven or thirteen. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, you can correct me, but Bob never made a lot of albums we are talking of we're talking about quality mm. you know once you can produce quality works it doesn't matter the quantity but you always have to be able every song means so much to me and i put so much work in it i try to not even though when i started uh, writing i decided not to write too much about death because there were so many of my colleagues who were doing that. Yet in the beginning, I wrote a song like Amiri Beba and those, but after a certain time, I decided, no, my emphasis will be on love because love is something everybody can relate to. But then that gives you, your, your, your scope becomes too little, mm. but I'm able to, to, to put words together, make my own uh, proverbs and adages to use in songs. And I've been so fortunate to have dedicated fans who are ready to go with me on that journey because I will not use the normal words that everyone use. I will spin the words around and and keep hammering on them till you get it. Like a song like uh, Daddy Anuma, I'll still come back to Daddy Anuma. Mm -hmm. Daddy Anuma never really had chorus till the end of the song when I, when I sing Odobeba, Odobeba, Dabinia. But then at the, at, the, at the bridge, where I go, Obiba Mami, yeah. Obiba Mami, that side, I keep hammering on it. And now most of the young ones are using Obiba Mami in their songs. Mm. I mean, which which wasn't really, but it became the hook in the song, but that wasn't what it was meant to be. Okay. Now, talking about people using the hooks, of uh, using Daddy and Mine, even some other productions of yours, are you one who seeks to be uh, informed and having to give permission to these young ones before they can use your works. Because that's what a lot of uh, your colleagues tell us, uh, that when you're about to use my work, inform me, let me grant you permission, because sometimes you might not use it in the song that I would like, and blah, blah, blah. Or you're one who says, OK, this is a legacy I've left. Let them take a bit of it. Um, some of them do come asking for permission to, to, to cover the songs. As long as you don't use it for commercial purposes. I have said, uh, you see, there's a saying in tree. You see, a born in Takra and a man here can see Sometimes, uh, you see, uh, a song like Enfaminko has been covered by uh, a guy, in, uh, a musician in, in Holland called Frenner. Oh, wow. He covered it for the, for the Dutch crowd mm -hmm. uh, audience. And it's, it is doing very well over there. Then another guy picked it up in Spain and did a Spanish version of it. The same song in Flamenco. 
They did come to ask for permission. We gave them the, the release and we, we signed who gets what percentage and it's all done the right way that it must be done. Mm. Now we have, you see, time changes. Now we have this vibrant uh, social media and if people want to show how best uh, they can sing covers of other songs, you know. True. And uh, I, I don't mind people covering my songs, but I guess sometimes what, I, if you can't take it to the next level, just do it like it is, you see. Everything is there for you. The lyrics is out there. The, the music is out there. You can even get instrumentation. Here's the instrumentation to sing your voice on it to, to show how good you are and how best you can interpret a song. We all do it. I've done versions of I'll Give Anything. It is not my song, but I love the song. I did it. I asked for the permission, paid something for it. And then because I was going to put it on my album, that's for commercial purposes. Now on social media, a lot of people do cover the songs. Some of them won't even take the, the, the time to learn the lyrics and they, they, they will like do it with that. And that's what, that, that really, like when I listen to that, that really hurts, you know? Oh. If it, because the work has been done already for you. So just take the time, learn the lyrics, sing it, do it well, and you get that credit goes to you. It doesn't come to me. So if the work has already been done to you, don't just bring in your words or your melodies. Because for me, every melody that I sing to a word means so, so, so much to me. Have you had a cause to call anyone to say, you've used my song, I don't think I love the way you've performed it. I don't think you got the lyrics right. Can you pull it down or can it be corrected? Have you had the reason to do that? Um, I have, sometimes I get people tagging me on my Instagram page, on my Facebook, um, because if you do it well, I will put it on my Instagram just to like give you attention yeah. or my Facebook and give you attention. Mm. But if I don't get, I don't feel it is, it is good enough, then I won't do it. You know, I think, uh, um, I, there are songs that, People have come to me requesting, wanting to do a cover versions, and I always, always, I have been giving them the, the okay to go, go and do it. Why a song is that like so? a song like America. Why? Um, if if you can do it and do it well, you you are you, you are free to do it. But if if um um. You cannot, I said it before, if you cannot add anything to it, do it as it is. But you haven't and given them the opportunity to try or they sample it and send it to you to listen and then you say you don't like it. Is that what happens? Uh, say it again. I, I, I'm can saying you that, it? Do, they, do they record and send it to you and you listen and you say, no, you haven't done the song well and so I won't give you the permission. Or outright when they ask you for permission to sing America, you say no because you're sure they won't do it well. No, it's, 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 uh, well, when you, it's not everyone who will bring the song back to me to listen to it, you know, mm. people will just do it and put it out there on their own. And there, there was, there are, I mean, like, in Famine Koho, like I said, yes, others have covered, they didn't even do the song. They picked out melodies and just built a whole song out of it, mm. you know, and it sounds beautiful. It's something I wouldn't think of doing, you know. So that's that's for me. If I hear that, it's like, oh wow, this is this is beautiful. And that same way is what I want to feel if anybody touches the song, you know. For me, they are my babies. Mm. They are they have my babies. I mean, I I conceived them and brought forth to them. So they mean more to me than just uh, songs, you know. I, I something before we go on a break he said that except you're not using it for commercial purposes some of these people record these songs and put it on their youtube channel is that what you consider don't you consider that commercial as well because they might be generating some revenues from there miss jane i can hear you too well I'm, can I'm, you can you I'm saying that you said you do, if you allow people to use do cover or covers of your song, if they're not using it for commercial purposes. And I'm saying that some of these people record and place it on their YouTube channel. Don't you consider that commercial as well? 
it is, I mean, when, once you're making money out of it, even when you put it on uh, on YouTube and you're making money out of it, that's that's commercial. So what do you do? Do you ask them to give you some revenue? Do they have to give you some royalties? Do they have to pay for copyrights? Mm -hmm. Well, on, on, on YouTube on all the, and all the other platforms, uh, my music is there. I have a, I have a, a company that handles my, my social media, um, songs that are there for people to uh, download on their phones and other things. So the moment you put the song out there and it is played, the, the, the returns still come, will come to me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you've not yeah. had cost to actually ban people from posting uh, your songs. Yeah. Then also, uh, I, 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 um, you said earlier that you get inspiration from also listening to songs and that you do want to listen to different kinds of songs every day uh, to also be able to write. I'm, I'm just curious on what kind of songs, which people's songs do you listen to? But before you answer that, I want to take a quick break whilst you prepare to answer that question. We're having an exclusive okay. conversation with Kojo Entry, the maestro, music man. We'll be back for more. It's about telling us uh, the inspiration he gets, what kinds of songs he listens to uh, for these kind of inspiration. Hello, Minji. Yes, so sir. We're back. Yes, sir. So we're back on, okay. and you, you're about telling me before I took that break about the kind of songs yeah. you listen to to get inspiration yeah. to write. The, the inspiration comes from life itself. You see, it's great to be alive, and everything, I, you know, I always try to stay in tune with nature. I love nature. You know, I have a, uh, if you come to my house in the morning, I get up in the morning, uh, water my grass, there are things that I do myself. Some people, when they see me doing it, they're like, okay, won't you get someone on? But I do that because it make, I, I like to stay uh, yeah, grounded and in touch with the Mother Earth. You know? So I do things like uh, gardening and a whole lot of things by myself. And uh, um, I like to just sit and listen to everything, the wind, the rain drops on, on the roof because I hear music in everything. That's that's something that I've had since childhood. I hear music in every sound. People will hear sound and they think, oh, that's noise, you know, but I hear music in every everything that I mean makes uh, uh, sound. Okay. I hear music in that. And so uh -huh. when I'm writing, uh -huh. um, it, I start writing more like, more like when you go to church and people are singing in, in, uh, are, are talking, are praying in tongues. That's how I start writing my songs. I get the chords, I get the mood, and then the words starts forming, and oh, wow. then the the the, the a, a topic will, I mean, a, a, the title will run, a title will come, and then the words will start coming to it. So it's it's a uh, it's. I get inspiration for it, from everything, from I, I, everything I, 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 around me. Great. I'm told we have to go, but I have two more things to ask you. Earlier when you talked about writing songs from the feminine perspective, I was wondering why you didn't get backlash uh, from the men who always felt or who still feel that you were biased towards the women. Um, again, I couldn't make out the words too I'm, well. I'm asking whether you didn't have backlash from the men who felt that your songs were female buyers. Well, yes, 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 yes. I've had, I have a lot of that. But uh, there are songs for the men too. There are songs for the men. But it's, you see, in our, in our, in our, in our environment, and I know I'm going to get a lot of bashing from this, I think we live in the, in the, uh, Maturistic society that their money casa or bank casa, you know, mm. and it is as the men are any it me worry five four then I say for a yeah penise I mean I mean I'm not saying say yeah man ko yibi pamcho yeah mwa mumba shimi pamcho I'm just saying so the 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 female does not have a a voice, you know. And when I started writing my songs, I found myself on that side. And they have been the ones 
they've been, I mean, the, the very first people who started gravitating to my music were the ladies. It is the ladies when uh, they sit in the man's car, they ask, who are you? And then the, the, the guy is forced to go and find you? So the guys started playing the songs until they also got hooked on some of the songs, you know. So the, the, when you come to my show, the ladies are there supporting me, feeling all the words because they feel the words are from the heart. They are not, I just don't sing the words. I try to, uh, I try as much as I can to live by the songs that I sing, even though, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm a perfect gentleman or I'm a perfect man who, I mean, but I try to be, you know. Okay, I, I, I'm going to preserve the remaining questions for another time. This all time would allow us today. We are so glad that you made time to join us uh, via Zoom. And congratulations to you. The conversation about you wanting to make Africa thank you, proud Missy. is one that is still lingering because we think that you've already made Africa proud. But thank you so much, Kojo Enchi. Thank you, Miss. Next time, I promise to be in the studio. We can't wait to have you, sir. All right, so thank that's you, it you. for today's edition of Simply Showbiz. Thank you so much for making time. Uh, we have to go, but I'll be on radio at 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's 3 FM, 92.7. My name is Miss G. Thanks to the entire team, and enjoy the rest of our programming.